Please stand by for a broadcast from the National Emergency Warning System. Ooh. A new video. What do we got? Hello, everyone. Fleet research changes. Today we will tell you what changes will happen in War Thunder Fleet in the newest major update. New power is coming. War Thunder naval battles began with a so-called Mosquito Fleet. Mm -hmm. These were small, fast motor combat vessels armed with torpedoes and light artillery. And boring. As time went on, a heavier fleet began to appear in the game. Frigates, destroyers, and light cruisers. We know very and well heavy cruisers and German pocket battleships. Naval battles to try their hand in handling large vessels. That's why, in the new power update, we have decided to divide the research of large and what? small vessels into two different progress branches. Now you can oh, start thank God, finally. A tech tree that looks like all the rest of the tech trees. Vessels. Fast motor torpedo boats, gunboats, and frigates will continue participating in naval battles together with large vessels and aviation. But now they will be researched separately within the small fleet line. The division between the small and large fleet allows us to make the large vessel branch more diverse. In the new power update, we are nice. introducing the first battle cruisers and battle cruisers and battleships. Ah, oh, nice. And large caliber weapons. These are mainly combat vehicles produced at the beginning of the 21st century. Hang on it a second. That, that was Alaska. The largest power on the sea during the period preceding World War II. Almost all game nations will get their battleships. Enormous, slow going, and well protected, they're capable of changing the combat. Almost all nations. Salvo, what happened to you guys? Naturally, Since when do you add content to all nations and not just Russia or one, Germany or America? Aviation and fleet. Just remember that and destroy the most dangerous yep. enemies, which may be out of your allies death. Yeah, you're gonna be you uh, more about the a hard run dealing with aircraft with these things. They got no any aircraft guns. Devblog or what <laughs> World War Two media. aircraft going up against ships when they were no no air forces. And See you there. Wow. Whew. Good stuff. There you have it. War Thunder. Finally getting battleships and battle cruisers. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? It's been a long time coming. But finally we're going to have battleships and battle cruisers. And as I said, watching that video the first time ever in the history of war thunder where they've added content to all nations instead of just one or two really really well done war thunder the division fleet uh tech tree requires changes to the cost of researching buying and repairing ships from different classes for details of these changes see this table please note the maximum reward multiplier in silver lions for the blue water fleet has been increased from 150 to 280 percent in ab and 360 percent in rb well, it's going to be expected when the trees change around. Everything's going to cost more or less. You need to change those incomes. Due to these rearrangements for the majority of destroyers, ranks 1 and 2, and the reduction of multipliers of, of rewards for linear units of a level, blah, 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 blah. All right, so guys, what we're looking at here is you're going to be able to research destroyers, some of this early escort stuff, at rank 1 and 2 now. No more waiting until you get to rank three or four before you have a cruiser or a destroyer in your lineup. And this is great news. We're adding new premium destroyers and cruisers to ranks of one to three, but with new more relevant private pri prices. These new vehicles will allow you to quickly research the top battleships and cruisers. And in the new power up will already be planning a power update. We already planning to add six initial premium rank one destroyers and two destroyers of rank two to three as you can see here they're going to remove some from the game and add some more premium destroyers available for the purchase of the market will be hidden in the research trees for players that haven't purchased them but you can still find them on the market with a with the search 
The changes will also affect squadron vehicles. The Project 35 will be moved to rank 5 in the USSR Coastal Fleet Tree and increase in research cost to 520,000 squadron experience and a maximum purchase price of 5,600 Golden Eagles. The IJN Shimakaze will remain at rank 3 with the same squadron RP and Golden Eagle cost. In the War Thunder New Power update, we are presenting the first battleships and battlecruisers. These are giant and heavily armoured ships. Yes, yes, I think we are fully aware of that. There you go, guys. But um, that's not it. HMS Dreadnought. The first real battleship. This ship, if you aren't aware, was a British ship um, from the early 1900s, 1906, I do believe. And... When it was built, it made all navies across the globe obsolete and started a weapons arms race for all the major naval powers to compete. And not only that, but it allowed navies that in the past couldn't compete and it gave them a chance to finally catch up to some degree. So a small nation that had nothing or a very small navy couldn't compete with another navy because of its sheer size. All of a sudden, that one na nation could could have one dreadnought battleship and be on a par with the previous greatest navies in the world. It completely shifted the balance of power in the world. Dreadnought was the first. So what was the big deal about Dreadnought? Well, Dreadnought had kind of everything. It had super heavy armor. It had the best. Now, Britain weren't the only ones that were developing world-class armor at the time. Uh, Germany were also developing fantastic armor, and I believe France were also developing their own armor um, types as well, or use, utilizing their own armor types. But um, Britain, being one of the premier navies of the world, um, quite possibly, with argument, the most powerful navy in the world, um, it, it was... It was there, leading the charge. So it built a ship with the best armor. It built a ship with some of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, anti-ship guns in the world at the time. 12-inch. Um, it had a unified battery. It had a weapons control system where they could control um, all weapons for ranging and targeting um, to increase accuracy, um, rate of fire, um, and... It, it could control the fact that making sure that all those guns were shooting at the right ship rather than each turret um, picking their targets or, or, or trying to figure out what was going on. Um, it had a steam turbine engine which allowed this beast to do 22 knots an hour, which may not seem fast to you now, but back then it was unheard of. And not only was it 22 knots an hour, but it was 22 knots an hour as long as it had fuel. Whereas the triple expansion engines and stuff that the other nations previously were using or were still using at this time, they were limited. They may have had a top speed, but they couldn't use that top speed all the time. They had to keep tuning it down so that the engines wouldn't blow up <laughs> uh, or destroy the ship. Um, this had um, all the most advanced technology in it. So really, this thing completely reset naval warfare and that's why it's it's historically so famous and i'm sure you've all you heard the the name or the term of dreadnought before and um and it's all because of this this ship so that it's coming in game is fantastic and i think anybody who's been watching any of the trailers up to this point was already aware that this ship was coming um especially with the sneak peek and our little little sleuthing with the shadows in the in the fog so now that we know that it's coming let's have a quick look at some of the pictures they provided and see here 12 inch guns um it had it couldn't provide all of its guns on a single broadside because um which may seem strange today um it actually had um these I don't know what you call them, wing-mounted gun turrets. So they're on the side of the 
because they had all this superstructure in the middle, they couldn't put a gun there, so they put a gun on each side of it. So I believe there's one, two, three, four turrets with two guns each, so it's an eight gun broadside. Uh, from the front, this gun here, this one here, and the one on the other side could all fire forward directly front. Um, and that meant a six gun frontal broadside. You got a ramming bow here and um, not much else going on. I mean, this is still a pre World War One ship. So the technology from today's standards that you may be used to, um, it, it looks quite, quite poor, but at the time, this thing was cutting edge. There you go. That is Dreadnought, and that is the new Navy so far for War Thunder. So what do you think? Are you excited about it? Because I'm excited. War, uh, War Thunder's naval battles, they've been a very niche group so far. Um, they started off with Air Force. They added tanks. I would suggest with without any proof to back it up that quite possibly tanks have become the most popular aspect of war thunder um and then navy came and it went nowhere and that's because they i honestly they made some really really bad decisions they didn't listen to their player base to start with and they thought they knew better and they didn't bring out big ships they brought out these little pt boats and they were boring and then they scrambled to bring in more and more stuff and working on the foundation that they'd already created um it just it wasn't great you could have some fun battles in it and i have had some fun battles and i have spent a lot of time in navy but um yeah nowhere near as much time in the other in the other versions of the game and i've got a lot of hope for this i am really hoping that this completely changes naval battles uh, in War Thunder and that average Joe Blow uh, wants to come out and play it now so I believe this is going to make a big difference to um, how people see um, naval forces in War Thunder hmm. alright guys if you've got anything to add please do uh, list it in the comments below and we'll see if we can get a conversation started about it and um, if there's anything that I missed or you want to add, any speculations that you have, put it in the comments below as well. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching the video. Please like and subscribe.